Well, here we are. We've made it to another Sunday. I would really like to get to the point where I am not congratulating you on coming to my next show, if you want to call a show or talk, my next dead duck. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do it because every single time I seem to be doing these programs or these talks, some drama has happened and I would really like to get to the point where I'm not bitching about racism, not bitching about the United States and like having more general topics to go on. But, and I don't know if I'm ever going to get to be there if that's just the way of the world, but yeah, I'll have to say congratulations. You didn't die of COVID last week and you didn't get killed by a white supremacist. So, Hey, you're already starting out this week. Um, a little bit better, Lisa, I think so. Yes, you will see that I am using the photo of the stricken Ashy Babbitt, Ashy, Ashley, Ashy Babbitt, as the header for the the um, podcast tonight. If you don't know by now, and I am sure you do, she was a 14-year Air Force vet who was shot in the neck as she tried to storm the inner corridor of the Capitol last week, crawling through a broken window. If you haven't seen a video of the shooting, I suggest you look somewhere on the Washington Post online uh, website last week where it was posted. You can see everything leading up to the actual shooting there. Originally when I saw it, I thought it was a bad shooting, but so much has come out over the last couple of days of videos from different perspectives of actually what was going on out there. But someone on Twitter put it so succinctly that Ashy Babbitt will forever be known that she died a martyr for an overweight, fake tan TV personality whose claim to fame is saying you're fired and not being able to drink water with one hand. What a hell of a way to go out. I mean, really, that, that, that's what she's going to be remembered as, which maybe is slightly better than being remembered as the patriot martyr Kevin Greeson, who tased himself in the nutsack to the point of going into cardiac arrest while trying to steal a painting in the Capitol building, allegedly. That still could be internet rumors or tales but as i've said for that one like i'd like to believe it i'd like it to believe it so that when we write our pbs special about the the war of 2021 that we talk about the story of kevin geeson who died by tasing himself in the balls and that is why you should not go against america i mean i think it's an appropriate you know fables for children <laughs> fables american fables for children in the new era I, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Yeah, you know, I have no issue naming and shaming these people because of what happened to these people or the consequences of actions they took last week when they decided to terrorize the American people by attacking the Capitol, which is what today's TED Talk is all about. Consequences. Consequences because, as I said, more and more video and pictures and different angles are, are showing of, of what actually happened last week. I mean, I'm going to be quite, quite, frank with you I didn't last week when I saw it was going on I thought it was insane I thought it was crazy it was making me upset too but I also thought that it was a lot of mob action and if you've ever had I used to be a DJ way back in the day and there's this and I think any artist knows this that when you're doing a live performance you can control the room when you've got the room all in with you you can feel that energy and especially if you got some good tunes going on it was punk rock night when I was DJing I knew, I'll never forget this one particular night, I knew that the next song, depending on what I played, because I was a DJ in a bar, that people would have started throwing beer bottles and chairs and stuff. It was to the point that I had the manager up front calling the DJ booth in the back. You can't, you, you couldn't hear the phone ring, but you could see the light ringing up and he was looking straight at me and I saw the light on the phone and I wouldn't pick it up because I know he was about to tell me to turn it down. And I'm not going to lie, my nipples were like hard because <laughs> I was so excited because I had that moment, that moment of power of knowing that whatever I did next, whatever next song I played and whatever I said over the microphone next was either going to get that bar completely wrecked that night or it was going to calm it down. And I kind of thought that what happened in the Capitol last week was, you know, a lot of mob action because people were just getting wound up. But come to find out from the information that's coming to light right now that, you know, n not only was it encouraged by some of our elected officials, but it was planned out. 
it was planned out. There were, you know, agents involved in helping. And it was, a hel- it was even more serious than the seriousness that we already saw. And so far, now six people have died because of what happened last week, which I'm shocked. It's only six people. But now with the things that are coming out, <laughs> there was a guy there with zip ties. They were screaming about hanging, you know, Mike Pence. I don't like the guy, but, you know, I have no, no willing, no reason to hang him. As far as I know, he's not a traitor yet. And if they had found Pelosi and probably AOC, I can't stand her, but whatever, they would have probably killed them. I mean, they already, you know, bludgeoned to death one Capitol Police officer. I thought he had been trampled, but apparently he was beaten to death. This is what was going on last week. So we come back to it today. What we're talking about now are are, are consequences. We're here four days out from the chaos in the Capitol. Trump has been deplatformed. He's not on Twitter. He's not on Facebook. He's not on Instagram. No social media for Trump anymore. He's been deplatformed. There are calls for invoking the 25th or impeachment again. Um, Various QAnon idiots have been removed from Twitter and Parler may be on its last legs. Amazon doesn't want to host it. Now that one you got an asterisk for because there, if you want a server hosted, you know anything about the dark neck or technology or etc. Um, if you really want something hosted, there's always a way to get around major companies not wanting to host your website. I mean, that's just that's another talk for another day. But if they really want their 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 service hosted, they will be able to find somebody. It just seems like the admin for Parler, just some of the breaches that they've had and stuff isn't particularly the most tech savvy people in the world. I don't care. Hack those motherfuckers to death. <laughs> find out all their information and get them arrested. I don't feel bad about that. But Parler being on its last legs is kind of like, eh, prove it to me. Um, the senators and representatives who instigated this are either chanting right now mia culpa or they never meant for this to happen or other gop lifers are now climbing that they are no longer are now claiming they are no longer republicans i see you colin powell i see you um that's like being a cokehead and a whoremonger murderer who knows that they're going to die on the 24th, but swears to God that they found Jesus at 1159 on the 23rd and repent it. I'm sorry, it doesn't fucking work that way. It is not like the GOP that we saw or have seen in the last four years just suddenly showed up last week on the 6th. That didn't fucking happen. This has been going on for a while and we've been warning it. We've been warning it. We've been observing it. It's gotten worse and worse since, you know, the Tea Party was where it really started to get really out of control. And here we are. And because this is where we are, there are consequences. We're starting to discuss those consequences. But what should those consequences be? That's, I mean, that's, that's the question of the day right now. What are the consequences for what happens? Because you see a lot of the Republicans saying like, well, you know, we need to reach across the aisle. We need to build consensus. We need to bring the country back together. We need to all give hugs to each other. No, fuck that. Fuck that. Let's play what happened last week. Or you can, again, look at the picture that's posted for this podcast of a woman who's dead, who I don't really care because she was doing something she shouldn't have been. But that's, there, there need to be consequences for this rioting that happened last week where we had elected officials terrified for their lives. So, you know, there, there, there needs to be serious consequences. Now, as I said, the, the, these consequences are, are multi-layered, several folds. Um, there are legal consequences. So people need to be identified. They need to be charged with sedition, treason, mob action, etc., ad nauseum, and they need to be trialed and they need to be jailed. What I fear is really going to happen, and we're seeing all these videos now of people on the no-fly list or being dragged off of out of airports or being dragged out of their homes. My concern is what's really going to happen is these people are going to be put in front of a federal judge, and because they never got in trouble before, they're going to be slapped with a fine, and if not a fine, probation and community service. Fuck your probation and community service for basically 
doing terrorist acts against your own country like that's a load of bullshit how about you let all of the black and brown people who are sitting up taking space in jail just because they had an ounce of pot in their pocket out and we'll have more than enough room for everybody who decided to storm the capitol last week that's my two cents on that one but yeah there's definitely need to be legal charges and it, that's not just for the civvies quote unquote civvies who were showing up in the Capitol last week causing all the problems. That's also for all the lawmakers who started this shit to begin with, you know, the the representatives, the senators who didn't want to certify Joe the, the vote for Joe Biden, all the way up to Donald J. J. Trump himself. Yes, he needs to be I don't give a shit about the twenty fifth and impeachment so that he cannot run again because they'd censure her him after that but dude dude needs to be in jail he needs to be in jail for so many things at this point but what happened last week rests squarely 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 on on his shoulders and these are all laws that were broken so again there need to be legal ramifications legal consequences to the actions that happened last week but there's also other consequences that need to happen. There needs to be changes to the law itself. You know, I alluded to this in my little addendum, which I don't want to call a Wednesday podcast an addendum because I want to use it to title addendum for something else that I'm, I'm thinking I want to do. Because um, I think I'm going to keep this podcast really based on on political, business, societal things, and that anything more lighthearted will go to another podcast because I just enjoy talking about these things. But um, going back to what I was saying is that, you know, the addendum to the legal, you know, charge and convict are changes to the law itself. And I'm alluding to what I had on my last podcast on Wednesday, where I'm ta- I was talking about how Germany for the longest time had laws against hate speech and hate parties. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I'm fairly certain that the United States is one is the only, if not one of the very few countries in the world who has, you know, a right to free speech. It's you don't have a right to free speech. And we we tie that up that the fact that we have a right to free speech and we have a right to guns is freedom. It's fucking freedom. I can sit there and call that guy the N word freedom. I can sit there and have a militia in the woods and march march around because if the government now, and this is a catch-22 here. Like, <laughs> the reason why we have the Second Amendment for anybody who doesn't understand why the United States has the Second Amendment really does go to the Revolutionary War and that we are always supposed to have a right to bear arms in case the government turns against us, which in some aspects, <laughs> that's what the motherfuckers on Wednesday thought they were doing, except the government didn't do anything against them. They were lives were not in danger. They were not having their their goods or homes taken by the federal government. They're not starving. I mean, there was no clear and immediate danger where they had to march on the government. They just didn't like who got elected, pure and simple. And they don't like brown people or any person who's not white. Pure and simple. And I, I'm not even going to have a fucking argument with you on that. Because if you saw the t-shirts and, and, and the hoodies and all the shit that was going on, it was very clear what a lot of their damage was last week. But it's like if you are given toys and you don't know how to play properly with toys, your toys need to be taken away. So I'm willing to give you freedom of speech except for certain things. So you don't get to have hate speech. Hate speech. Hate speech is a crime. Now, public places um you're if you want to stand on a corner a public corner you're supposed to be able to sit there and say oh i hate latinos and that's fine but you know what i i don't know that i'm even for that anymore i mean it's difficult to me as an american and a quote unquote freedom loving american to say like i'm not so sure about the second amendment i don't think it's a second amendment i should know (laughs) i'm sitting here talking about the constitution i can't remember which is which but forgive me i probably still know more about the constitution than you do but the right to free speech and i want i want to curtail that it's like you have a right to say you like strawberry ice cream and i like mint chocolate chip ice cream which mint chocolate chip is the best ice cream kiss my ass it is but um fine we can disagree on that but when it starts to cause to if you are saying something that cause causes a part a population of our society to feel uncomfortable, unsafe, and unwelcomed here, then that speech needs to be not allowed. 
and fuck your freedom of speech. Fuck your freedom of speech because to build a consensus as Americans to know that you, me, him, her, everybody, we're all Americans together means that we need to make sure that when something like this is going on, it is not fucking allowed. You do not get to say stuff like that in public. And you sure as hell don't get to sit there and have whitey hates everybody group. Okay. No proud boys, no boogaloo boys or whatever the fuck they're called. No, no, no organizations, no red, no reddits, no Q chans for Q. None of this shit. It, you can't, you just cannot do it. it. It needs to be illegal. And maybe, maybe we can revisit this, you know, 20 years, 30 years from now when people seem to be able to play with their toys and be decent again, and might say like, okay, you have total freedom of speech. But right now, I think in order to build a consensus in the United States that I'm sorry, there needs to be, you know, legal changes on this. And that's always a hard thing to do here because we are so clinging to our constitution. It is a, it's so hard to fucking change. And as I've mentioned before, it was made so that you could change it. Because the founding fathers knew that you would need to change it. So, you know, I, I've covered legal consequences. I've ch- I've covered consequences in the law. But, you know, there also needs to be societal consequences, which may also feed into our law changes. And this is the time now for you to bring, you know, black, brown, yellow folk everybody to the table in true partnership and ask them what is needed for healing in the country. All right. I don't really want to care. I don't really want to hear what Ted Cruz has to say or any of the GOP. They weren't the ones who have been harmed. They aren't the ones who were, they're the ones who were doing the harming. All right. I cannot think off the top of my head of anything that has happened in the last 20 years now in the United States, in the United States, once again, I'm going to say in the United States, that was, you know, and I can, I'm now thinking of a couple of things where people will argue with me on this one. So I'm going to be careful with this. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to open up at some point in time to bring guests on here so we can have arguments where everybody can watch. But, and if you want to comment, I'll be happy to, to talk to you about this in the comments, but I cannot think of anything that the Democrats have done specifically to cause harm to any populations in the U.S. And I can think of things that the GOP has done with gerrymandering and laws in order to cause harm to particular populations in the U.S. Now, that's not to say that we haven't been done wrong in the U.S. because I can think of a lot of things that have happened to indigenous people in the last five years, last 10 years where we didn't support them, and that's from both the Democratic and Republican side, but I'm talking much, much bigger picture here. And I think if you want to talk about, people want to talk about healing the country, then for the first time and for a real time, you need to really bring people from different aspects of life together and say to them, hey, what what do you think is needed for healing? What do you think is needed? Because you know what? I'm sorry, the rest of you people have had the platform and the microphone for too fucking long. You don't get to sit there anymore and say what is needed for healing and bringing the United States back together. But hey, you know, keep your eyes on what's going on on the GOP side with all this bullshit that's being spoken out right now because people are now making their moves for 2024 like Romney and Pence. And, and I'm of the opinion that Pence is really running the government right now and that Trump has been put in a little room where he's only president in name only, but he can't tweet. Pelosi's already gone to see, you know, to the Joint Chiefs of, tra- the Joint Chiefs of Staff to try to make sure that he can't launch any nuclear codes. I mean, someone mentioned to me earlier that Trump is a strong man. He doesn't like soft power like that. I get that and I agree with that. But when everybody, again, if you take away your toys and you're surrounded by people who are trying to keep you blocked from doing anything, any additional harm, there really isn't much you can do. There just isn't. But to me, to me, all of it's not good enough. At this point in time, it's not good enough. There needs to be consequences. Um, and those are my ideas of, of, of for what the, for what the consequences need to be. I'm a little I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm happy to see some people who are starting to get arrested, but I'm not happy enough because I haven't seen the Congress really make any moves to 
have any real consequences for what happened. And now kind of alluding into what I was saying about watch what's going to happen for who's trying to run for 2024. That's part of the reason why they're not moving because number one, they don't want to fire up Trump's base even more by doing something to him so drastic in public that they think that they're going to start rioting and acting up again for the inauguration and keep joining together and causing problems. They also want to make sure that they have a chance to keep their seats in 2022 because if they take the wrong action right now, we've got a midterm election that comes enough. So that's another thing that they're concerned about. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, yeah, these are basically the reasons why there's nothing really, really meat and potatoes happening right now. And I, I personally am, am, am finding that very disappointing, but let's stay tuned. I mean, how many days left until Trump's out? Let me, let me take a look at the calendar real quick. Oh, let's start with tomorrow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. Ten days left. Ten days left, but, you know, in a lot of aspects, it's ten days left of Trump, but it's just the beginning of everything else. And I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. Anyways, thank you so much for listening to me tonight. I'm once again happy that you came. If you enjoyed this, please, please, please give it a like um, on whatever whatever platform that you're listening on. I have it being fed out to Spotify and to iTunes again. You can always come to my website, which is mightbetasty.com and comment there. I would actually love to see you. And um, as I said, things are moving quite along. I'm working on some things in the background with this podcast and some other things that I'm really pretty excited about. I'm really hoping to get to the point where I'm not always having gloom and doom every fucking week when I open this up and say, hey, thank you for making it for another week. But um, that's where we are at this point. Anyways, that's enough from me. I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay well. And most importantly, these days, I want you to stay fucking smart. I thank you for your time. And I will either talk to you Wednesday or Sunday of this week. Have a great one.